From Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Uh, my name is Edward Holly. I represent the East Coast Underwriters Association of America. Yes? It has been brought to my attention that you are a, a special investigator available on a contract basis. That's right. But as a matter of fact, we carry a policy on a Sidney Rykoff, a pugilist, I believe. We have received notification of a very uh, unusual nature. Uh-huh. Why don't you get it off your chest, Mr. Hawley? Uh, off my chest? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. We have just received a ransom note. Mr. Rykoff has been kidnapped. Edmund O'Brien in another transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to East Coast Underwriters Association, Hartford, Connecticut. Attention, Edward Hawley. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during investigation of the Sidney Rykoff matter. Expense account item one, a dollar and a half cab fare to your office. Now, I'm not in the habit of beating about the bush, Mr. Dollar, but the situation from which we must uh, extricate ourselves is, well, uh, delicate enough to warrant your extreme caution. Now, Sidney Rykoff will be dead in seven hours. You want to pay off the ransom note, is that it? Now, you understand that this requires the utmost secrecy, because few people realize the necessity of insurance companies, uh, such as ours, being forced to negotiate with unscrupulous persons. Uh, here's the note. It was mailed yesterday in Kansas City. Have the police seen this? Certainly not. I'm afraid you don't understand at all, Mr. Dollar. Now, you see... Yeah, I uh, see. $25,000 is against 100000 for you boys. No questions asked, right? Uh, right. It was what anyone would expect a ransom note to look like, made up of print taken from newspapers and magazines and pasted on a plain sheet of yellow paper. It read, We have Sidney Rykoff. If you want him alive, bring $25,000 to the Anthony Millstone Mausoleum, Johnson Park Cemetery, Kansas City, Missouri, at exactly midnight, May 13. If you call the police, forget the money. Rykoff will be dead. Now, naturally, $25,000 is a lot of money. Uh, if there's a possibility of saving it, we wish you'd do a little uh, investigating first. Now, look, Mr. Hawley, it's 5 o'clock in Kansas City now. As you said yourself, he'll be dead in seven hours. It'll take me at least five hours to get there. We'd better pay off the... We'd better pay off first and investigate later. You've marked the money, haven't you? Uh, certainly. Here's the list. And here's the 25000 The matter's in your hands. Expense account item two, $453 in advance for charter plane. As we hit the Ohio River, the sky started to blacken ahead of us. Looks pretty rough out west. What's weather, say? Nothing later than St. Louis. Storm fronts at 16000 I think we ought to set down. We can't. I'm not in Kansas City by midnight. Somebody will be dead. You a doctor? Yeah, in a way. But this is one sickness that can only be cured with money. Look, mister, I'm going to lay it on the line. I'm no hero. I got a wife and a couple of kids back east. My contract says I'll get you to KC if I can. But that front ahead there isn't kid stuff. So bounce this kite around like a balloon. Well, I can't tell you to do it. It's up to you. But if we set down now, we'll find a dead man in the morning. Okay, mister. I'll do the best I can. Fasten up. This plane is too underpowered to climb above it. We'll try to go right through. Hope the wings stay on. What was left of us coasted into Kansas City at 1140. Expense account item three, an extra hundred for a pretty good pilot. Expense account item four, three dollars transportation to Johnston Park Cemetery. The driver took off my money. The driver took my money and scooted off fast. I found the right mausoleum at the edge of the park. I looked at my watch. It was three minutes to twelve. Park's closed, mister. Yeah, I know. I'm supposed to meet somebody here. What for? It's a financial matter. You can conduct your business with me. Wait a minute. How do I know there won't be more business tomorrow? You don't. Where are you going to leave him? We'll let you know. Yeah. Thanks. See you around. There's never a guarantee in a kidnapping case. You hope the guy will be alive, but you don't just sit around waiting for him to show up. I checked into a hotel, had half a night of sleep, and the next morning 
I strolled around the listed place of occupation of victim, Sidney Rykoff, the Southeastern Athletic Club. This high-sounding name covered for a bunch of cheap pugs and cheaper boxing equipment. Sidney's manager made his shabby office livable by spraying the corners with sweet air household deodorant and keeping the door closed. Close the door! What's the matter with you? Crazy or something? You want that smell coming in here? You know what trouble I go to keeping that smell out of here? Sorry. People come in here, what do they care? It's not their office. They wouldn't do it at home. What do you want? I have information that you're Sidney Rykoff's manager, is that right? Yeah, you know where he is? That bum. Matched him against Malone next week and he's off on another bench. You want him, you can have him. There's a thousand fighters I could have. Two years ago, I should have torn his contract to pieces, but I fell in love with his right cross. Did you ever see his right cross? No. Stand up here. That won't hurt you. Put your hands up. No, higher. That's right. Now, look. It's the fifth round. I've been throwing body blows at you, see? Let me loosen my tie. Forget it. Are you listening to me? Yeah, go ahead. Go well, ahead. Now, look. Your defense has dropped. See, I telegraph a left. A left what? Cross. Oh, cross, yeah. Then, bam! Hey. Yeah, with me, it never works. That's how Rykoff won the Golden Glove in 47. Hey, how do you know he's off in a bin? Yeah, he mixes it with milk. You ever hear anything so disgusting, bourbon and milk? He thinks he's still in training that way. When was the last time you saw him? Friday afternoon. He was working out. He looked great. But when he comes back, he's got no manager. What kind of shape can he be in for Malone? I'll have to bail him out. I know it. If I don't, who will? Not his wife, that's for sure. Now, I was going to ask you about his wife. Let me tell you something about that woman. In one way, she's the greatest gal on the face of the earth. But on the other hand, she can be a demon. But let me tell you something what she did. Yeah? You know that big boy from Chicago had come up through the middle way? What was his name? That Snyder, Ryder, cried of or something like that. Anyhow, she... She told Sidney if he didn't beat this guy, she wouldn't let him in the house. Well, Sidney gave the greatest fight it was possible for him to give. But he got it in the eighth. He was a mess, mister, a mess. You know, they had to sleep in the hall. She wanted a winner? Yeah, he never lost again. I'd rather have her under contract than him any day. He don't fight for money. He don't even fight to be great. He fights to keep her from leaving him. Hey, who are you, anyhow? I'm from Hartford. What, with Milosky? No, not Milosky. What was... Was it with Miloski? Did you have a stable of welterweights? No, I'm thinking of that. Who? What, what, what am I thinking of? That? Thanks for the information, Mr. Medill. I think it stopped raining. Wait a minute. Who, who are you? Insurance. Oh. Well, for the love of Charlie, close that door! Come on, brother. Give it up, Say, I hear you're nosing around about Sidney Reichel. I've been losing a lot of money on him. What makes you think I want to know anything about him? Quit it, will you? I listen to doors. You found out anything? About what? About his disappearance. Who said he disappeared? He ain't been around, he disappeared. Some people think he went off in a binge. Nah, it ain't his cycle. He had his last binge in March. He ain't due again till September. You a friend of his? Allow me. My name is Al Barsoumian. I handle wages. Where do you think Rykoff is? I don't know, but the longer he stays there, the better I like it. The betting ain't good when he's around. Why's that? He's erratic. Sometimes he wins in the eighth and sometimes in the tenth. <laughs> Well, that's the way it goes. His wife still live in the same place? Yeah, just follow the broken glass. I didn't get on the trail of the busted gin bottles until about 11 that night. I knocked at a door and she yelled, come in from the kitchen. She was sitting at the table in a soup-stained kimono, peeling the polish off her fingernails. Sit down. Oh, just throw them stockings on the floor. You drink? Not right now, thanks. I'm an insurance investigator, Hartford, Connecticut. When did you see your husband last? Oh, Sidney, he comes home when he feels like it. Why, something happened to him? I think you ought to know, Mrs. Rykoff. Your husband has been kidnapped. The company I'm working for received a ransom note. I paid somebody $25,000 last night to get him back. $25,000? For Sidney? Gary Medill, his manager, took out a $100,000 insurance policy on him. Will you throw me that bottle? Who'd know about that policy? <laughs> $25,000 for Sidney. The papers know about this yet? Hey, I gotta get fixed up for the reporters. I look like a perfect slob. Nobody knows about it but you and the insurance company. Now, how about giving me some answers? Why, so I can get him back? What do I want to get him around here for? Who'd know about that policy, Mrs. Rykoff? Besides Medill, I don't know, but he's Gabby. Who did you pay that 25000 to? Well, the man that gave it to me didn't give me his name. Wait a minute. If that bum walked out on me, if he picked up 25 grand by kidnapping himself, well, he can stay out. He's not getting back in. What did he look like who you paid it to? He was dark. Couldn't see much but his size. Uh, 
Not up to here. Oh, then it wasn't Sidney. He's a light heavy, 5'11". Could have been a friend. Any idea who? No, and if I had, I'd tell you. Ah, he can't get away with this. What makes you think he'd try? Because he's got no guts anymore. He wants to quit fighting. When he does that, he quits having me. And he knows it. I'm not the type for any milk stop. Hey, you sure you don't want a drink? No, thanks. Why not? Well, Mrs. Rykoff. Who's that? It's me, honey. Who's he? That's your husband? No, it's another stumble bum, Mickey Snell. Uh, hey, who, who's this guy? Never mind who's this. You lost your fight. Oh, it's you, honey. What's your fight? I heard it on the radio. A lousy four-rounder, you stupid clown. Get out of here. Oh, no, don't be that way, Joe. It was a bad match. I'll win the next one for you. Then you can come back. But you lost and I Get out of here! Hey, Joe! Sure. Get the out the of here! Way? Go on, you stupid mug! She backed him into the living room and reached up towards the mantel as she passed it. She finally found something heavy enough. A two-foot wrought iron candlestick. She didn't have to swing it. Her guest took one look at it and went out the door. I thanked her for her hospitality and followed him. He went down two blocks and into a bar. I got his name from a waitress and slipped into a booth with him. What, what was you doing there, buddy? Business, Mickey. I was asking her about her husband. Yeah? What for? What difference does it make? He's missing and I want to know where he is. I don't believe you. You're part of why she kicked me out, and I don't like it, see? You know why she kicked you out. She likes winners. You lost your fight tonight. Oh, she knew I was outmatched. That guy had to reach and everything. Look at my face. Hey. hey how, how long are you a friend of hers, buddy? I'm not a friend. I just met her. Came in from Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, how well did you know Sidney Rykoff? What is it? Look, I'm working for an insurance company. They want to know where he is, that's all. How well did you know him? He beat me a couple of times at right court to his. You know where he is? No. Did he take a run out on his own, or was it somebody else's idea? Who, who could have that idea, buddy? I hear he was winning a lot of fights. He was. He beat me a couple of times. Well, who was losing money? Al Basumian? Um, this is too public. Uh, where are you staying? Commodore Hotel. It's not far from here. You know it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it. Uh, but I can't go with you. I'll meet you in the lobby. We'll go to my room. No, it's got to look like I ain't meeting you. Sure, it's easy. We'll order another drink here. I'll leave, and then you saunter over in about 20 minutes. Okay? Okay. I pulled only one double cross on Mickey Snell. Instead of waiting in the hotel lobby for him, I waited outside the bar. He came out 20 minutes later, and I followed a quarter of a block behind him. I was half expecting him to make a wrong turn at the first corner, but he didn't. He stopped to wait for the traffic signal to change and then stepped into the street. And you say you saw it happen, Mr. Dollar? That's right, Lieutenant. I saw it happen. It was deliberate hit and run. Uh, you get the license number. Oh, only the first three numbers. M-176. Uh-huh. Now, any other witnesses? Well, I don't know. There were a lot of people around. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean witnesses. Say, hey, uh, what'd you find in his wallet? Oh, identification. Mickey Snell. He was a fighter. He must have won tonight. He was loaded. Can I see one of those bills? Uh, uh, yeah, Dollar, but watch it. I have to keep a record. Thanks. It was a $50 bill the lieutenant handed me. In the corner was a number. A number I'd memorized on the plane trip out. The bill on Mickey Snell's body was part of the ransom money I'd paid for the victim I hadn't gotten back. We will return to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Circle Wednesday night. That's the night George Burns and Gracie Allen drop by to visit with you over most of your CBS stations. Each Wednesday, Burns and Allen bring you 30 minutes of rich laughs and hilarious characters. Remember, Burns and Allen, this Wednesday night. Now, with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. I knew Mickey Snell had died for something, and his inglorious death pointed to one of three possibilities. First, Al Basumian's gambling ventures. Second, Gary Medill's insurance on Sidney Rykoff. And number three, the old kidnap yourself and collect the ransom type crime, with Mr. Rykoff himself as the suspect. To me, the latter loomed as the most probable. 
I told the police as little as I could, still operating on the assumption that Sidney would be dead if I spilled what I knew. At 2 o'clock a.m., I went back to my hotel for another half-night's sleep. The next morning, I made up my mind to visit Mrs. Rykoff again. It was such a nice day, I walked. As long as Sidney was missing, there was nothing to do but ask questions until something seemed to make sense. Because everybody had an angle. Basumian might have been paid off, Gary Medill might have been paid off, and Mrs. Rykoff might have been paid off. I took the whole thing up with Mrs. Rykoff as she stood in front of a cracked, full-length mirror, trying half-heartedly to comb the knots out of her hair. You come in here with your out, lousy accusations. I'm not accusing anybody, Mrs. Rykoff. I'm trying to get at the truth. Now, somebody has your husband, right? Hand me that brush. And somebody has the 25000 right? How should I know? Look, I don't have any interest in Sidney Rykoff. I don't care if he's alive or dead. I don't care about your $25,000. All I know is I'm sick of hearing about Sidney Rykoff, Sidney Rykoff, Sidney Rykoff. I had a good mind to go out and change my name. You too must have had a fine romance. Oh, he was okay for a while. He was winning steady. I can't stand to go with a guy that can't win. And when he lost... He slept in the hall. Exactly. A man has to fight for me. I ain't just sitting here waiting for losers. And Sidney was winning, wasn't he? Winning? Winning what? With that Medill as his manager, what could he win? What kind of a contract did Sidney have with Medill? <laughs> Medill got everything, including Sidney's third molars. So what was I supposed to do? Look at this place. Sofa needs covers. Boy, could I use some clothes. Tatters. Look here. Seems busting out all over. I like Sidney to win, but I like him to win something big. Maybe you can if you bet on him. Take Pasumian, for instance. Never gamble. Against my whole way of life. And then there's the possibility that you got in debt and knowing about Medill's $100,000 policy on Sidney, talked Sidney into kidnapping himself and writing to the insurance company for ransom. That's a dirty crack. But a pretty fast way to get out of debt. I've been scouting around. You owe a lot of people. I'd put the figure up to around $10,000. For a girl who lives like you do, that's a big sum. You make me mad. Get out of here. Bet you didn't think it would be like this when you first met Sidney, huh? Golden Gloves winner, handsome boy, trips around the country. I'll bet Get you... Get out! Now put down that candlestick. I'll get it. You finish your hair. I'll get it. You stay where you are. Oh, copper, huh? Yeah, what is it, Sergeant? Mrs. Uh, Rykoff lives here? Hi, Mrs. Rykoff. What is it? Well, I'm afraid I've got bad news for you, Mrs. Rykoff. Uh, your husband, Sidney. What happened? We found him on the highway just outside of town. He's dead. I studied Mrs. Rykoff. Her face showed only what could have been contempt and maybe a little relief. The officer made an embarrassed exit and I closed the door. Mrs. Rykoff walked to the window and I followed her. We didn't say anything for a long while. And then she turned to me. What do you expect me to do? Cry? Not if you don't feel like it. I feel like I felt when they paroled me. I didn't know you did, Ty. Twice. For what? Burglary and a couple other things. What are you going to do now? I don't know. Something. Go away, I guess. You know, he wasn't such a bad guy when you got to know him. He tried hard. I used to sit in the front row, and when they knocked him down, I'd stand up and yell at him and call him every name in the book until I saw how mad he got, and he'd get up and win. Funny guy. I never could figure if he won because he loved me or if he won because he couldn't stand me. Hey, have a drink with me, will you? I'd appreciate it. Sure. Expense account item 5, 250, transportation. After toasting the remains of Sidney Rykoff in gin, I went down to the morgue and took a look at what was left of the Golden Gloves champ. His head had been bashed in with what the attendant described as a heavy instrument. The heavy instrument hadn't been found. They covered him up and I went back to the hotel. It was still possible that Sidney had abducted himself, collected the money, then been killed for it by whoever he hired for the job. But then everything was possible. The more things happened, the more things were left in the dark. My head was spinning with Rykoffs and Medills and Basumians, and the taste of that raw gin wouldn't go away. I slept through the day, got up and ate dinner, and went to sleep again. It was a good thing I did, because the next morning, the phone rang early. Uh, hello. Mr. Dollar, 
Yeah. This is Al. Al, Al. Give me a sec. Uh, oh, yeah, Al. Yeah, Basumia. You better get down here to my place. Yeah, why? But don't be ridiculous. I can't tell you over the phone. 1050 Clay Street in 10 minutes, huh? Yeah, as soon as possible. Well, hurry. Yeah, yeah. Spence account item six. 185 taxi fare to the brick bungalow of Mr. Al Basumian. I was surprised to find a man of such uncertain profession housed so well. He met me at the door in his bathrobe and without a word led me down the cellar stairs. He flicked on the light near the furnace and pointed mutely at something gold in a box of ashes. I lifted it out carefully. It was a golden statue of a boxer. The engraving read, Sidney Rykoff, 1947. The base was caked with dried blood. This might be a little difficult to explain to the police, Al. I came down this morning to give the furnace a good cleaning. It ain't been used since winter. My wife has been after me to clean out the furnace because it ain't been used for so long. So I came down here. Look, Dollar, I didn't have nothing to do with this. This is probably the object that killed Sidney Rykoff. Could very well be that you thought up this kidnapping, killed Sidney, and took the dough. Would I kill Sidney, plant a murder weapon in my own furnace, and then call you? Now, would I? To throw suspicion away from yourself? It's been done before. All I can say is I didn't do it. Look, Dollar, I called you because I thought maybe you could get me out of this. You being a man of influence... As far I... as influence goes, mine stops at getting funeral passes. And stick around if I were you, Al. Any traveling you might do between now and when the police get here is liable to be considered a confession. You gonna take me in? What would you suggest? Drop the trophy back in the box, Della. Every so often I run into something like this. Come on, stand away. This shows you, I'll never trust a friend. He might be more honest than you. Get upstairs. Get those hands up. You bet. He walked me in front of him for a few paces. As we passed the light switch, I let my elbow brush it down. As the lights went out, I fell to the floor. He shot over me, and I felt the hot sprinkle of powder. I grabbed his legs and pulled him to the ground. Don't... Okay, Al. Come on, let it go. Let it go, I said. You dirty double-crosser. Come on, drop it. I grabbed the gun and felt my way along the floor on the wall to the light switch. When I snapped it on, I found I'd left a very cold Mr. Barsoomian on the cellar floor. I took the Golden Gloves trophy out of the box of ashes, wrapped it in a piece of newspaper, and headed up the stairs. Expense account item seven, two dollars, taxi fare again. To the police station? No. I was a fool, but no. I had a big hunch that the man I'd left in his own basement was not the killer or kidnapper of Sidney Rykoff. What I should have done is told the police my theories and hopped a plane for home. But there was $25,000 the company had paid in ransom money, plus $100,000 for the death of Sidney Rykoff, which they were going to have to pay. And if things stacked up the way I had it figured, maybe I could save them on both accounts. No, I didn't go to the police. I went to the drab apartment of Mrs. Sidney Rykoff. I was about to knock when I heard a pair of familiar voices inside. You shouldn't have come here, Gary. Well, I had to. Now that they found her, we can get out of here. You think so? I don't mean right today. A week, maybe. Then we'll get out. Just me, baby. Uh, I'd better scram. Careful. As he opened the door, I ducked around a corner of the hallway and flattened myself against the wall. Once he looked back, I saw him squinting into the shadows, and I wasn't sure whether he saw me or not. I waited till he was a good way down the street before I went to the drugstore and phoned for the law. I told the lieutenant in charge to give me five minutes alone with Mrs. Rykoff and then to take her away. He agreed, not knowing what was up. I went back up to Mrs. Rykoff's apartment. In the hallway, I quietly unwrapped the Golden Gloves trophy and stuffed the newspaper into my pocket. The door was open, just a crack. I opened it wider. There was no one in the living room. I squeezed inside and shut the door with care. I heard her pulling up window shades in the bedroom. I went over to the mantel. There was a round, clean spot in the center, and the trophy fitted right into it. Then I went over to the couch and sat down. I felt the comforting bulge of the Sumian's gun in my pocket, and I lit a cigarette. She must have smelled the smoke. How did you get in here? You left the door open. You got a lot of nerve. You know, something's different about this room. You know that? You know, I can't put my finger on it, but there's something added. Maybe it's you. No, no, I mean the way of furnishings. Are those the same drapes you had in here before? Look, let's skip the interior decorator routine. No, no, please, it bothers me. Let's see, the sofa was over here, remember that? Chair was over there. Maybe it's something on a mantelpiece. What? Yeah, yeah, it's that thing. Hey! Where did that come from? I don't know, but it sure is pretty. Oh, I guess that's what Sidney won in the Golden Gloves, eh? 
Let's see that. No, stay away from there. Well, what's the fuss? It's just a trophy. You are pretty smart, aren't you? Well, it isn't going to do you any good. You better put that trophy back where it belongs, Mrs. Rykoff. You don't want to cave in my skull like you did your husband. Nobody's stopping us. Nobody. You must swing a pretty mean trophy, Mrs. Rykoff, but not today. Let go of me! Come on, give me that. No! That's Quit it! That's better. Oh. Ah, you better stand over there near the door. Go on. This thing's loaded. Get him, Jerry! <laughs> Hi, right, Dollar. You know, better late than never, huh? It all tied up nice. Al Basumian's gambling racket was looked into and cracked wide open. Mrs. Rykoff's confession read something like this. I killed him a week ago. I got mad at him. I picked up the trophy off the mantelpiece and killed him. I didn't mean to kill him. I called Gary and he put the trophy in Al Basumian's furnace and got his boys to lug the body out to a place he had. They kept the body for a week and then put it on the highway after the insurance company paid the ransom. End of confession, end of affair, end of story. Expense account item eight, $203.54, air travel back to Hartford. Expense account total, $982.28. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd and David Ellis with music composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Edmund O'Brien can soon be seen starring in the Columbia Pictures production, The Los Angeles Story. Featured in our cast were Howard McNear, Howard Culver, Walter Burke, John McIntyre, Bill Gray, and Jeanette Nolan. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Join us again next week at this time when Edmund O'Brien returns in another transcribed adventure of... Yours truly... Johnny Dollar.